प्रेमस बोले गजानंद स्वामी की जय उमापति महादेव की जय कृष्ण कन्हैया लाल की जय सतगुरुनाथ महाराज की जय अब लोग कराओ चाहे तो इस गाने से जॉइन और इस दिन तीन फाइनल नाइट तो वह थ्री नाइट्स ऑफ डिवोशन Visualizing a beautiful form, Bhagwan Shri Ganapati Lord Ganesh, with faith and with love, we pray. Om Gananam Tva Ganapati Kvam Havamahi Kavim Kavinam Upamashravastamam Jeshtra Jam Brahmanam Brahmanaspat Anashrunvan Dhoti Vesida Sadhanam ओम श्री महागणपति नमः ओम भद्रम करने भेषुनियाम देवा भद्रम पशे माक्ष बिरिया चत्रा स्त्रे रंगे इस दुष्टवागम सस्तनो भी व्यशे मदेवहि तम्यदायु हो स्वस्ति नेंद्रो व्रदश्रमा स्वस्ति नपोषा विश्वेदा स्वस्ति नस्ताक शोरेश्वर नेमी स्वस्ति नोम्र हस्पते रिक्तातु ओम शांति 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 ओम यशचंद्र साम्र शबो विश्वरोपा चंदो भियो जमरता संभवोवा समीद्रो में दया स्प्रनोतु अमृतस्य देवधारनो भूयासम शरीरम में विचर्षनम जिन्हा में मधुमत्तमा करना भयंबोरि विश्रवम प्रभाना कोशो सिमेदया पिहिता श्रद्धमे गोपाय ओम शांति 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 ही ओम अगन्न मंदला कारम भयंतमी नचराचरम तत्परम दर्शितम ये न तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः ओम श्री रुपवानंदा ये नमः ओम श्री चिन्मयानंदा ये नमः ओम श्री गुरुदत्ता ये नमः ओम श्री सत्यसाई श्रा ये नमः ओम तपोवना ये नमः ओम श्री शंकरा ये नमः On this day of Gita Jayanti. We bow to the lotus feet of Bhagwan Sri Krishna. You are the Atma, the soul, seated in our hearts, Prabhu. And tonight, as we join with this beautiful family once again, the Sukai family, we pray that may the light that we are about to wave before you forever shine in our hearts, in our homes, in our lives. And if ever there were to be a dark moment, please, Prabhu. May your light always guide us. Arati Kunj Bihari Ki Shri Nidhar Krishna Murari Arati Kunj Bihari Ki Shri Nidhar Krishna Murari
of devotion, glorifying and praising our Lord and Divine Master Bhagwan Sri Ram Chandraji, as we have seen last night. Uh, the Kathawe Sati Devi and Bhagwan Shiva had this conversation and for her own spiritual development, Bhagwan Shiva explained the greatness of Mariyada Purushottam Bhagwan Sri Ram. Today being Gita Jayanti, it is only but right that we do our discourse from the Bhagavad Gita. And when I open my Gita, I open in chapter 6. So I will chant, in fact I will do the message tonight from chapter 6 of this very sacred text given to Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. But before we do this also we will have invocation and through the invocation we are going to chant the 8th chapter of the Gita as the night will be specially dedicated to our beloved little Avinash. On Tuesday he would have been 18 years old, he would have been celebrating his birthday on Tuesday coming and he would have turned 80 and so his mom and dad requested that we dedicate the night for him and of course it is indeed most appropriate that we do this chapter on behalf of his beloved soul wherever he is and will ever be and the ancestors of this generation the, the Sukhai generation we also pray that not only this family and their generation and our ancestors be blessed but also our individual families and loved ones who have gone to the great beyond Friends, we want to invite you now to close your eyes for a moment, visualizing the beautiful form of Bhagwan Krishna, the blue boy of Vrindavan. As a child, running and playing in Gokul, creating lots of mischief, and sometimes getting his mother Yashoda very hyper. Then he will run to her and he will say, Ma, all the complaints you are getting about me stealing Makan, all those people are telling the truth. Ma, I will never steal the Makan of the people of Gokul. At this time, the mother is looking at him in awe. His face is all smeared with the butter, the Makan, and he is telling her, Ma, I will never tell a lie. And the Lord, my friends of the universe, is smiling with him, looking at his earthly mother to give her the joy of being a mother. She is very serious and very upset and at the same time she cannot even lift her voice towards her baby boy, the blue boy of Vrindavan. As he grew older, older he won the hearts of the gopis and the Radha Devi was captivated by his love Radha Devi was captivated with his humility. Radha Devi was captivated in a very pure way through divine consciousness. His beloved Mamo, Kamsa, challenged him from the minute he was born. From the minute he took Avatar, Kamsa, because of his ignorance, he never knew who Krishna was. 
He could not have imagined that Bhagwan, that Krishna was Bhagwan, the Lord of the universe. And therefore Kamsa challenged him at every stage. And as a teenager, as he had promised in the past, that he would come on this earth to get rid of the evil forces, he had to get rid of his mano, Kamsa. He killed Kamsa. Kamsa and Shishupa. It was the curse that they had received, but the blessing that would last forever. That at the very last moment of their life, they were touched by the Lord Himself. At their very last moment, they were touched by the Lord Himself. Hey Krishna, please touch us also. While we are alive and while we are loving you and expressing our love and our devotion, may you continue to touch our lives. Bless us to be peaceful and happy human beings. We know that in this life, it will not always be smooth sailing and there will be challenges. And if there are any one of your devotees who are here tonight, who are going through difficult experiences in life, please bless them. We pray that wherever the soul of Avinash is, let the music of your Basuri soothe him. Let the music touch him. Oh Krishna, as you stand in the banks of the river Yamuna, this child suddenly left this world. And it's maybe because you call him. Because nothing happens without your will and your grace, O Krishna. Once again we pray. But even though time has elapsed, he will never be forgotten. There is one wish in the heart of the mother and father tonight. May their son always be in your arms. And if ever he has to come back in this world, may you always be with him in some way or the other. May you give strength and courage to the mom and dad and blessing to the loved ones. We chant your name with faith and love. Wherever the Gita is recited, that place becomes a place of pilgrimage. Wherever the Gita is recited, that place becomes blessed and purified. So says the Mahatmya of the Gita. When the Gita is recited, peace, happens. Om Shri Paramatmani Namaha Ashtamo Adhyaya Arjuna Uvacha Kim Tadpa Kim Tadbrahma Kim Adhyatman Kim Karma Purushottama Adi Bhutam Chakim Proktam Adi Daivam Kimuchyate Adi Yajna Katam Kotra Dehe Swimmadu Sudana Prayana Kale Chakatam Geyo Sinia Tatma Vihi Shri Bhagavan Vacha Aksharam Brahma Paramam Swabhavo Dhyatma Muchyate Bhuta Bhavo Dhavakaraha Visarga Karma Sanjitaha Adi Bhutam Charo Bhavaha Purushashtadi Daivatam Adi Yagyo Hame Vatra Dehe Deha Vratamvara Antakali Chamam Eva Smaranuktuakali Varam Yaprayati Samadhavam 
the sixth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita is named as Atma Sanyama Yogo Nama. Atma Sanyama meaning the yoga of self-control. So the theme of the sixth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita is where Bhagavan Krishna speaks to Arjuna on self-control. And in gaining self-control, he is telling, he will be telling rather that such a person will be able to liberate himself or herself from the cycle of birth and death because my friends this is the ultimate goal of our lives the goal of our life is to liberate ourselves from our gaman chakra the cycle of birth and the cycle of death and therefore he begins with a very important verse in the sixth chapter where he tells that do not become attached to the actions that you perform do not become attached to the actions you perform. In other words, he is saying, do not become attached to the results of the actions that you perform in this world. So in this particular first verse, he says, Shri Paramatmane Namaha. Ate Shashto Dhyayaha. Ate Shashto Dhyayaha. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Anashrita Karma Param Karyam Karma Karotiyaha Sasanyasi Chayogi Cha Naniradnirna Chakriyaha Naniradnirna Chakriyaha Anashrita Karma Param Karma Param Anashrita Those who Those who perform the actions without looking for the fruit of the action, Bhagwan says, that person is Karyam Karma Karotiha Sal Sanyasi. That person is a renouncee. That person is a sanyasi. That person, my friends, is one who falls into the category of renunciation. So sanyasi means one who performs action but does not look forward to the fruit of his or her action. In other, in other words, what they are doing, they are just performing their duties, performing their action without any expectations. Now that is something so very simple to say, isn't it? Isn't it everything that we do, we have some expectations? Name one thing that you do and you don't have any expectation. So we are doing, we are performing our actions. Now friends, there might be certain, of course, there are things that people do when they do charity and they do um, what you call charity and they do seva, service, selflessly, they don't want anything in return. So there are many people who does that. Seva and all these things, you know, Bhagwan tells are the means through which we can elevate ourselves. He says, such a person who performs action without looking for the fruit of the action, that person is a sannyasi. So, not a person who lives in a cave somewhere or in some ashram is a sannyasi alone. That person can be a swami also. But the person of the ordinary world who renounces the fruits of the action and does selfless seva, who does service without looking for anything in return, my friends, that person is also, it falls in the category, or that person, Bhagavan says, is a sannyasi. Anything that we do, we want to be praised for it. Isn't it? Anything that we do, and I tell you something, if you hear, I sing a bhajan tonight, and I sing a bhajan nice, right? And you all don't come and tell me afterwards, hey, Baba, you're real sing nice, you know? I vex you know. I'm well upset. I will say, you know what? I well practiced that bhajan all day and I went there tonight and not a person tell me the bhajan nice for hmm? Or if I do something for you and I am doing something to help you and you don't say thank you at the end of it, I upset you know. You see, 
if I am expecting to hear thank you, expectation creates results. So I expect to hear thank you. And sometimes, especially when you're doing um, like a person who has to do the vote of thanks afterwards. Who that is? Shanice? Or oh, Nikisha? I think Nikisha is right here. Upstairs. Nikisha is going to do thanks afterwards, right? And let us say, for example, God forbid, she forgets somebody who did something. Jai Bhagwan and Prashita Moro, you know. So poor Nikisha right now probably upstairs, busy right now, all the names she remember. <laughs> and all the things that she remember people did. Because she doesn't want to upset anyone. Friends, there are times also in our lives when we do things, we should not even expect to hear thank you. Oh, Baba, we just hear that doesn't happen to you. If you do something for somebody and that person did not say thank you or that person did not what you call express any appreciation Om Namah Shivaya let it be Om Shri Krishna Arpa Namastu let it go to Bhagavan Krishna I want you all to practice this friends simple sadhana don't ever be um, what you call in a place where you want, ex you are expecting to hear thank you, or you expect to hear the words of appreciation, just do. And especially when it comes to spirituality, and especially when it comes to, like for example, charity, when it comes to dan, when it comes to giving charity, when it comes to doing seva, seva bhav, just do. And that's why Baba says, love all and serve all. Love all, serve all. Don't look for anything in return. This is what Bhagavan Krishna is talking about here tonight. When he says that, hey, anashita karma palam karyam karma karotiha sasanyasi yogi cha that person who acts like that without expectation that person oh Arjuna is a karma yogi that person becomes a karma yogi and that person also becomes a sankhya yogi two things sankhya yogi means a renouncing it and a karma yogi means uh, a renouncing it also in this sankhya yoga Sankhya Yoga, the person is renouncing everything of the world. In Karma Yoga, he, re he renounces what you call the fruits of his action. Doesn't want to be praised at all. Next time, you do some form of kindness to others. At the end of it, just say Krishna Arpa Namastu. Krishna Arpa Nam. If you can't remember Krishna Arpa Namastu, just say Krishna Arpa Nam. Krishna Arpa Nam. Krishna Arpa Nam. Everything I do for you, Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Krishna Param. Huh? All the mothers and sisters and wives who are here, when you cook food, don't put the food in the table and say, hey, eat, I don't cook. Krishna Param, Han, you can come and eat. <laughs> when you are uh, finished cooking and you have to do the dishes and you're doing the cup and the plates and the pots, Om Namah Shivaya Shri Krishna Om Namah Shivaya Shri Krishna And you watch the pot But we You feel like I'm slave with this song? We feel like a washing machine And you go to my washing machine and you Jai Bhagavan to the washing machine Take everything lightly But only the person who is doing it Knows the, the, the burden of it, you know but anyway, to make a long illustration short, Bhagwan says here, whatever you do, don't allow it to affect your mind in a negative way. Don't allow it to upset you. Do it and offer it to me. Krishna Arpanam. In that way, 
the result or the fruit of that action will not come and affect you. He says, so sir, sannyasi, saha meaning that person, that individual, sannyasi, who has become the renunciate, cha yogi, and becomes a yogi, cha na niragnir, cha kriyaha. And this line is very important. You see, I was explaining to my Rishi here recently that the Swami is a person who renounces the fire, you know. A Swami is one who renounces the fire. And he, that's, that's why a Swami don't do Havan. A Swami don't do Yagya. What do you call Yagya meaning like in terms of offerings into the fire, etc, etc. Because Na Niragnir Na Chakriya He gives up the, the fire, he gives up the oblations. But the Swamis give it up personally, but they will have their pandits doing the Havan and the Yagya for the benefit of the disciples and the, de and the benefit of the world. They do it for the benefit of the world. So not just because I am a Swami, Bhagavan is saying, it means that you are going to just give up the fire. No, it must also come from within. It means when you give up the karma pala, the fruit of your action. And there, Arjuna looked at Bhagwan and he is saying, Prabhu, you know, I was just going to sing a bhajan to Lord Krishna. And the bhajan is Tere poojan ko bhagavan Bana man mandir aishan And I put the bhajan on the screen here. And when I actually look at it, it's not the bhajan. You know what it is? Tujhe suraj ka ho ya chanda Tujhe deepa ka ho ya tara Mera naam kare ga roshan Jagne mera raj dhara He wants you to know he is here. So probably he is uh, Turn the page. Tujhe suraj ka ho ya chanda Tujhe deepa ka ho ya tada Mera naam kare ta roshan Jagni mera chandara My child, your name will live through me, and it's a song between a father and son.
when that person renounces his or her what you call karma pala, then he or she would have risen to a very great height in spirituality, in the spirituality. And then he says something I want everyone to remember tonight. Friends, whenever you have time, go to chapter 6 and read verse number 5 where the Lord says, He says, especially the young people, he says, you are the friend of yourself and you are the enemy of yourself. Therefore, you must always keep in mind that you have to lift yourself by yourself. Do not wait for anybody to lift you. Get up and get. But at the same time, when you get up and get, do it for my sake. When the teacher stands up in front of the class, and that teacher is teaching the students, the teacher is doing that for the development of the student, not for a salary. If the teacher is teaching for a salary, then the teacher will, st will stop there and just do okay. I saw in the news today, I was going through the newspaper, and I saw where teacher, uh, some teachers, they are scared for their life. And who they are scared, you know? The children, the afraid, they are afraid of children. Imagine that. They are scared to correct the child or the students when they do something wrong because they will be abused. And the reason why that was being, why it was done, because yesterday, I think it was, yesterday was Friday, a child was being bullied in school, and I didn't know it have tax in school now, T-A-X. So the Form 3 student is taxing the Form 2 student. And the Form 2 student have to give his lunch and give his money to the Form 3 student. And when he refused, a fight broke out. And then the father intervened and then came up and beat one of the boys. I don't know which one of them, I think the bully. The, the, the one who was taxing. And of course, I did the news and then the ministry has to get involved now. And then investigations and things go on. Children and youngsters and youths. If you don't lift yourself through education. And if we don't lift ourselves through morals and values, not only the students, but us as adults, and as devotees of God, regardless of our race, religion, or color, my friends, then we will be dependent on people to lift us. And that is one of the biggest mistakes we will make, because Bhagavan says here, Atma Eva Ki Atmanaha Banduhu You are the friend of yourself. And then he goes on to say, Atma Eva Ripuhu Ripuhu meaning the enemy of yourself. Because friends, when we think in a positive way, we are the friend of ourselves. And when we think in a negative way, we are the enemy of ourselves. Thousands of years ago, you see, when you, when you sit down and you gossip about somebody or you speak someone, you think you're getting blessing? Friends, because you are talking about negatives, negatives will come to you. That's why they say, do not talk about the negative that anybody does. Now that's something easy to say. Also, I mean, if somebody does something negative, we have to talk about it. But where we have to be careful, do not allow it, my friends, to create negative emotions in the mind. Because from the moment the negative emotions are created in the mind, my dear brothers and sisters, we are now going to be liable to the result of that action, the fruit of that action. Therefore, Bhagavan says here, you will be the friend of yourself when you think positive and speak positive things. That's why we always have to be positive in spite of the negative. Always look at the bright side of things. Always look at the good side even, even though there might be a bad side. Friends, not everybody daughter no bad. Not everybody daughter bad. The daughter-in-law alone can't be wrong. Or the son-in-law alone can't be wrong. Or the neighbor alone can't be wrong. There must be two sides to every person's life. The friends can't be wrong all the time. 
Sometimes you hear some people always complaining, 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 and care, 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 crying, crying, crying. <coughs> Nothing good comes out. Always complaining about everybody. Everybody can't be bad. Isn't that true? Everybody can be bad. And that is when our mind becomes our enemy. Ripuhu, Atmanaha. Bhagavan Krishna says, and that is what we have to be cautious of and careful of because the karma pala will going to come up, it is going to come after us. Read chapter 6, my friends, at the beginning. When you go home, chapter verse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we have, I just run through those verses. I did the first one and now the fifth one. Run it through. Take it in your mind. Think about it. And here the Lord is saying, do not allow yourself to become the victim of your own mind. Everybody can't be bad. Everybody can be good. Everybody can't be unhappy. Everybody can be happy. My friends, in this way, we lift ourselves by ourselves. We are able to lift ourselves by ourselves. And in that way, once we are lifted, we are able then to what you call be able to achieve anything in our lives. That's why, my friends, Hanumanji in Sundar Khan, he tells.
पूछा भगवान श्री राम चंद्र दास के हनुमान बताओ ना रावण द्वारा पालित सुरक्षित लंका और सके अत्यंत बाकी के को तुमने किस प्रकार जलाया हाउ यू एबल टू बर्न द सिटी ऑफ लंका एंड आई सांग दैट चौपाई टू कम अप टू वन पॉइंट लिसन टू व्हाट हनुमान जी सेज हनुमान जी सेज प्रभु शाकान शाका मृग वानरों का यदि बड़ा पुरुषार्थ है कि वे एक दारी से दूसरी दारी पर चले जाते हैं प्रभु यू नो वट अंकी के दू ऑल अंकी के दू इज जम फ्रॉम वन ब्रांच टू अनदर ब्रांच फ्रॉम वन ब्रांच टू अनदर ब्रांच ऑफ ट्री दैट इज वॉट अंकी इज केपल ऑफ डूइंग सो इन अदर वर्ड वॉट आई एम सेम टू यू प्रभु आई कैन नॉट डू एनीथिंग Whatever happened in Lanka, he says. So sabatava prada paraguray. Not o not na kachumori prabhu tai. It's all your power. It's all your grace. It's all your blessing. It's all your miracle that happened, Prabhu. it's all your miracle that happened in lanka friends come back to the same concept of lifting oneself by surrendering the mind and accepting the fact that god does everything we are only the instrument in that with that attitude we stop working with the attitude of i'm making a living i work because i am god have blessed me to be qualified to do what i am doing and therefore i am working for the betterment of myself and for the betterment of my community if everybody work with that attitude friends there will be no poor people in the world everybody will be rich and then the government won't have to change the money <laughs> because everybody will be rich nobody will have to have corruption and hiding money here and hiding money there and deal and banditry and things like that everybody will be rich because we are working now with the right attitude we are working with the right approach and see my friends anuman ji says lord it was your will it was your blessing you did everything through me uddare daatmanaatmanam lifting yourself by yourself and giving up the fruits of the action for bhagwan lord is all yours only To be wealthy is a beautiful thing. To be comfortable in life is a most wonderful thing. To have a nice house that you have made your home is beautiful. To be in style and wear some nice expensive clothes like mine. <laughs> and in style. <laughs> it's good. Enjoy. You have work for that. If you are able to travel the world and enjoy it because you have worked for it. But you know what is the sad part friends? The sad part is when our attitude in life is based on abhiman tulsidas is talking about this here as hanuman ji was as shri ram was speaking to hanuman the abhiman that comes in the, the false pride the ego that comes in and friends it makes our home a house abhiman makes our house our home a house abhiman makes a qualified person unqualified Abhiman makes a person who is professional unprofessional. It undo all the good things. In other words, Abhiman does that. Makes un makes professional people unprofessional. Abhiman does that. With Abhiman, such a person, my friends, will only fall in life. And a person who falls in life. 
will one day be at the door of the God. And we're begging Bhagwan for a chance. The Bhajan says, Maybe Chadar Ura ke kaise. Give me one more chance, Lord. They give me a nice clean sheet. But I went in the world and I dirty it so bad. I want another chance to go and wash it. Friends, if the Lord were to come to you now, Subrimji, Risaji, everybody ji, if the Lord were to come to you now and ask you, he comes with a bag, a bag, you know, a, a, a jori. He comes with a bag and he tells you, put something in that bag for him. What you'll give him? Don't tell, just take. Tere dwar kara bhagwan bhagat har de And he is begging you for something. He is asking you for something. Please give me something. Fill my bag.
fill the bag of Bhagwan with this Abhiman that we have. My friends, and empty yourself of anything negative. Fill it up. When Bhagwan comes to beg by your home, he not coming for money, he not coming for food. He coming for you to, to give him all the negative things. Because, because he wants to cleanse us and he wants to love us and he wants to purify us and he wants to hug us and he wants to be with us all the time. But this Abhiman and these negative ten tendencies and things keeps us away from him. As a matter of fact, we keep ourselves away from him because of these things. And so we pray that wherever the soul of Abhinash is tonight and will ever be, may he forever be close to Bhagwan. I mean Bhagwan forever be close to him. And to Anisa and Subrim. May Bhagwan always, you know, you would not you all will not believe this, right? I'm saying this publicly. I told myself tonight I will not sing that song. To Jesus I will not sing it. Because I know if I did, it would have made them emotional. And that song just pop up my screen. I took a conscious decision not to sing it, but then I still had a choice, I didn't have to sing it. But since it came off by, by itself, I thought I should. But may Bhagavan bless you all to be strong and you know, I know that I could never comprehend what you are going through in your life and you will always go through. When you think of your son and especially on a day like Tuesday when he will be celebrating, he would have been celebrating his 18th birthday. It would have brought a lot of memories to you. It would have been a time where you would not imagine, you know, if he was here, how it would have been, and he would have, you know, been now a driver on the road, and he would have been doing his own stuff, and probably he would have had a girlfriend. <laughs> and he probably would have uh, prepared for what you call upper six exam. And all those things might be passing through your mind. But you know what? May Bhagwan bless you to be strong, and whatever memories of him come, Always remember the wonderful child that he was and the beautiful things that he said and did in the short time that he was here. And that will make you more happy and that will make you more strong. And this is what I wish you tonight. And Bhagwan says here in the sixth chapter, he says, you know, give up what you can give up. Give up anything that makes you sad. Give up anything that makes you sorrowful. And I know that you are not sad. I know that you are not sorrowful. You are just remembering your child that brings that type of emotion and nothing is wrong with that. Whenever you feel the cry of your son, of your son, do it. Whenever you feel to love him, you love him. Whenever you feel the smile about the wonderful things, you do it. Let people think you're crazy. But that's the way you will be expressing your love for your child. May Bhagavan bless you to be strong, bless his soul wherever he is, and may he always be with Bhagavan Krishna forever and evermore. With this message tonight, I conclude my discourse. And uh, at this time, to all the children who are here, the family, uh, Anisa and Subrim and the family would like to give the kids a little gift of, a little token of their love, their appreciation, their blessing. And we have Krishna, uh, who flew in all the way from New York. Oh, Deanne flew in from New York. Where's Deanne? No, this is Deanne. So Deanne flew in all the way from New York just to be part of this tonight. We want to say thank you, Deanne G. And of course, to all of you who came from far and distances. So while this is being done now, Panaji will do the Havan first, and then we'll do Purnahuti at the end. Between the Havan and the Purnahuti, the family will give the gifts, etc. So we have Pantanil to do a bhajan or two for us uh, at the time. We also had a very beautiful singing being sung, songs being sung at the beginning. What's the name? Hmm? Maniram. Special, special thanks to Bhaiya Maniram. Where is he? All the way in the back. If you would like, please come and sing one again for us. Afterwards, okay, thank you. मेरे मन वीरा की तारे हर पल शिव ताला पुकारे मैं शिव से लगाए लगन ओ लगन मैं शिव से लगाए लगन मेरे मन वीरा की तारे हर पल शिव ताला पुकारे मैं शिव से लगाए लगन ओ लगन मैं शिव से 
children, all the children, to see come up to the front. Oh, 
पूर्ण मुदच्छति पूर्णस्य पूर्ण महादाय पूर्ण मेवावशिष्यति ओम सर्वं वै पूर्णवं स्वाहा
सनातन धर्म की सुखाई परिवार की जय जय